Hey CSU, we're starting off another week. Uh, we're going to keep on with what we were doing last week, talking about the continuity of Jesus with another guiding star for Jesus talk. This week I want to talk about the fullness of Jesus. Uh, in a move that might isolate and uh, you know cause some friction between me and some of the listeners here, I want to talk about opening up with a uh, something that annoys me about kids sometimes. And I'm, I, come on, kids can annoy us all sometimes, so don't jump down my throat already. So we've had those conversations with a kid, you know, uh, and all the kid wants to do is talk about one thing again and again and again and again. I, I, um, an example, like a similar example that I had like a, was like with some kids on time and they had like one of those uh, animal noise things and uh, basically the wheel would spin and point to an animal and it would point to a cow and I'd be like, I came up with this idea. Oh, this would be a funny joke. You go, it's a duck when well, it was a cow. I'm like, no, it's a cow. And then you're like, oh, do it again. It goes to a horse. You're like, it's a cow. I'm like, no. And it goes on. You're like, oh my God, oh, that was pretty funny. And I was liking the attention and that people thought I was funny. I'm not going to lie. But then they want you to do it again and again. And for some reason, this joke never gets old. And you're 25 minutes later still doing the same joke. And you just want to get out of there. And, you know, we see this with, you know, kids as a certain age. It takes a while to develop and ability to talk about a lot of different things, be able to move conversation naturally. That once you've talked about um, whatever movie they just saw, or whatever book they like, or when you've talked about, you know, I don't know, whatever it might be, you can tell I haven't talked with the kid in a while. But uh, that once they've moved on, from, once we, there's a time you need to move on from that. There's a time you need to talk about something else, because otherwise it gets a little two dimensional, it gets a little dull. We need conversations to be full. And sometimes when we talk about Jesus or we focus on Jesus, what we do is we kind of just stay on a very one-track line with Jesus. Maybe that's because we're uncomfortable with certain aspects of the gospel, maybe because we really love um, one element of Jesus and it really supports our view of how we should be in the world, and so we just want to keep harping on that. And we see this in Jesus' discussion, both within the church and beyond it. You see it particularly with, um, I think, people who often stay very attracted to Jesus' sayings, or particular sayings, uh, and, but then don't really want to look much beyond, like deeds, or um, healings, or exorcisms, or the fact that he died and was resurrected. You know, we don't... Or sometimes it's people who don't want to focus on the words at all, because some, you know, they just want to focus on, look, Jesus hung out with all kinds of people, but he also said stuff. You know? So, I don't know if I'm being entirely clear, but Jesus was more than just a sage. Jesus is more than just a guy who said um, pretty things that we can uh, remove from their context and put on a uh, a poster on a conference wall on the uh, conference wall underneath a landscape photo. Jesus was more than that. Like any person is more than that. When you're going to describe your best friend, you don't just talk about one aspect of them. You're going to probably talk about a lot of things that make up who they are. And so last week, how we talked about how Jesus can't be removed from his past or present circumstances. Jesus came. Uh, was born into a Jewish situation, a Jewish culture, a Jewish religion, and we can't remove him from that. So too, can't, we can't remove one aspect of Jesus' uh, life or ministry from the rest. Uh, you just can't. You're picking and choosing. You're cherry-picking Jesus to fit who you want Jesus to be, to be a trump card or to be a stamp of approval to what you want. Now, there are times when you were going to highlight one aspect of Jesus' teaching or one aspect of Jesus' life over another. For instance, if you're going to talk about why the church should be involved in modern-day anti-slavery efforts, a great place to start is when Jesus reads from the Isaiah scroll and says that he has come to set the captive free. A brilliant place to start and a great place to center an entire discussion. There's so much there, so that's perfect. However, the problem is sometimes we get little antsy about aspects of Jesus' life, and we don't really want to deal with it, and so we just kind of try to ignore them. And we just kind of stay on this one track. Let's just keep talking about Jesus' uh, teachings on this one particular issue, because that's what I'm comfortable with. Like, in the West, we're often very um, skeptical and very uh, get a bit awkward about the exorcism stuff, but it's there, and we have to come to terms with that, understand it, talk about it, and, and, and uh, learn from it. We can't just ignore it because it doesn't fit our, what our, we wish the narrative would be. We don't get to uh, create this synth, um, synthesized gospel which fits our uh, narrative. Also, if you do that, we miss a lot of what's really good. We miss that there are ways that when Jesus' whole life is read in harmony, that there's actually much more to be discovered. For instance, okay, you might want to know what Jesus thought about love. Well, how do we understand love through a Jesus lens? Well, a great place to start, sure, is a, is a teaching. is the parable of the Good Samaritan, 
or when Jesus says the golden rule is to you know, love other people, treat other people as you would like to be treated. Great. It's a response to love. It's just really easy, but that's maybe a bit shallow in a way. So that's what happens when we look further. Well, we can see that Jesus showed love through healings and thus by restoring people and grafting them back into society, similar with the exorcisms. Jesus showed love by spending time with people who maybe wouldn't normally have someone of his importance spend time with them. We see love embodied on the cross when that Jesus was unwilling to strike down in revenge those who were persecuting him. We see it post-resurrection when Jesus welcomes Peter, who denied him, back into the fold. And even the resurrection itself is God's validation and vindication of the love which Jesus embodied and proclaimed. So when we read it in harmony, we see a lot more. We get a, this deeper and broader understanding of God, which is probably something that Christians should consider important. So fullness is our next guiding star. We said that if you want to talk about Jesus, I'm not putting out these hard and fast rules, but if you want to talk about Jesus removed from his continuity as a Jew or in a way that is denying of his fullness, you better have a good reason because I think they're kind of important. Just debating whether to add something. No, come to groups. Come to groups and I'll talk about how Jesus' ethical treatment, ethical teaching fits within an apocalyptic framework. Uh, there you go, a teaser. Great, see you then, bye.